Hey peeps, it's Jess Hill Zerk Geek, and we are not talking about food today. We are talking about food photography, and in particular, nail polish. Because I've gotten a lot of questions in person and on Instagram, how I plan my nail polish, what do I do, is this even a thing that I actually plan, which the answer, yes. And I was planning to make some kind of like a nice tutorial, and you know what? It was really boring to listen to. So we're gonna do this as a little bit of a ramble. I will go through a bit of my step-by-step -step of how I think up polish, some of the gear that I use, and some of the polishes that I use. So some of you of the dude type persuasion may be watching this already and going, this is not what I need. I'm fine. No, 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 no. As long as you've got someone's hand, yours or your models, in the photo, you're gonna care about how their hands look. You may not care about nail polish, you're gonna care about their hands. Nothing wrecks a good shot sometimes, like some really bad hangnails. Just, it's not good. And it's fixable, and it's easy to fix, and you don't have to suffer through life with bad hangnails in your shots. So let's do this. Before we even get into nails, it's gonna be your prep. And there's actually a fair bit of prep that I do to make my nails camera worthy because if I leave these guys to their lonesome, I get the world's worst hangnails. Number one, drink water. I cannot stress this enough. You're like, oh, this is the most obvious tip ever. No, 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 seriously. Like, especially a couple hours before a shoot. Drinking water right before a shoot does nothing but two to three hours in advance, if not a bit more, drinking eight ounces will make an actual huge difference, especially if your model is over the age of say 25 or at any age where they're starting to show any kind of skin stuff because humans age, it's a thing. For example, for me, I get uh, these really strong crease lines here if I'm dehydrated. And so if I remember to have enough water in my system, they go away. Not completely, because you know, I'm human. I use my hands, but enough that it doesn't detract if I'm doing a whole hand shot. And just in general, drinking water is good for you. So no dehydration on set, please. Next, you should be using sunscreen on your hands, seriously. Like I wear sunscreen as much as I can and I use an umbrella because it protects everything. <laughs> and I'm trying to find, there are actually UV gloves you can wear. I've been trying to find ones that don't make me look like I'm trying to be a mad scientist. They come in glitter. I'll be buying five of them. And I really like Elta MD personally. I'll put a link down below for Amazon. And I like it because it's really lightweight. It's one that you can put under makeup. It is a facial sunscreen. They make a bunch of these. Pick whichever one sounds appropriate for you. I also do like that Ursa Major, which I have on their little guys here, but not by the face balm. Ursa Major makes a line of moisturizer plus sunscreen and it comes in a nice little pump you can get little tiny guys and that's a great one on the go if you need moisturizer as well so personally my moisturizer of choice is probably Palm. this lovely thing i've been living off for years well not this jar thanks to a recommendation from amy morgan i will link to her below because she is fantastic and this stuff is i have started using it actually for my face and i was it's wonderful. I don't think it really does anything anti-aging. I don't care. It feels wonderful. It keeps the eczema down. This guy is about $25 a bottle and usually on Prime or two-day shipping. I would highly recommend if you buy this, buy two if you have the budget because you will live in this stuff. Like, it makes my dry skin so happy and my spouse and I each have our own because we can't share them very well. I've actually stolen his this because I'm out. Thank you, Spaz. And also, if you care about gender neutral packaging, very low scent, very light scent, gender neutral, nice and lovely, good stuff. Now, of course, that's not actually my whole lineup of stuff. I also am a huge fan of oils. Now, everyone gonna tell you to use oils. I really got into Poetic Blend a while back. They're a bit pricey, not gonna lie, just I love the Timeless and Hero Oil. They feel wonderful and they're lightweight. Though what I actually use when I'm going around is Bliss Kisses Nail Oil Pens. I got into these guys thanks to Christine from Simply Nail Logical, who now recommends doing vitamin E plus jojoba oil in the same kind of pen. It's much cheaper. So I'll link to her thing because she probably has the percentages listed. You do want to get those carrier oil vitamin lists right. This guy for me is one I can remember to freaking use and sometimes it's all that matters. And these guys, they're about 20 bucks for a four pack, so not super cheap. They last me 
about a month per pen and you just click it off click apply you can even apply it around and over nail polish works great i just rub it in and i like this little guy for ease of application on the go or wherever i am i get fragrance free because i apply it all the time and i don't want someone to have to deal with a really strong scent and a nice thing if you have a shoot with little warning is that the day you find out you have a shoot just start applying it like they have this whole three-day hydration challenge on bliss kiss i just would just be like you know every 15 minutes just apply 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 and at the very least by the time you get to the shoot you're gonna have better hands now i've sucked your head full of facts about nail oil that you did not think you were gonna get from someone who likes to talk about dessert I didn't think I'd be telling people this, to be honest. I'm still kind of in shock that I'm a go-to person for moisturizer. Let's talk about actual prep, because seriously, planning your polish matters. There's a few things to keep in mind. One, does the nail polish work for your skin tone? That is, is it a bright enough color? Is it one that stands out against you and the subject? Um, I'm kind of a cooler, pale translucency, and so I tend to go for brighter tones but you know experiment and see what looks good with you i tend to avoid pastels for that reason if i have my hand on an object my nails kind of blend into the subject matter and it looks really just no so for me i go for bold colors and i also love sparkles which actually let's talk about sparkles i have found personally that glitters are not great for photography i love glitter so much it used to be just glitter queen we had all the glitter in the house it's that if you don't have enough glitter on your nail it kind of looks like you messed up so if you look at this photo here i'll put on screen somewhere you'll see that i that is a glitter polish from rainbow honey which goodbye rainbow honey i will miss you it just doesn't look right now i could have fished which is a non-technical term for grabbing a bunch of polish on a sponge get glitter and stamp the crud out of it but it still wouldn't have looked that great unless i got very even coverage if you have a smaller glitter it'll work well but what i've gotten really into are hollows and shimmers hollows being the rainbow holographic polish that i think are the bomb but really i love shimmers and these are not quite a glitter they're kind of a fleek and a really great example of that would be Isla Polish's Dr. Rosenbeaver, which I did not think I was going to like as a polish. And then I put two coats on and I was like, ah. Now, what I try to do before I go onto a shoot thing where I know what I'm going to be doing is that I go, okay, what items do I think I'm going to be ordering? Do I know what I'm going to be shooting if it's for a client? And if I do know, then I can go, okay, here's what it looks like. And I'll sort so through at this point i generally have an idea what colors will work for things and i might run a test and if it looks good great if not back to the drawing board there's no shame in going back and fixing polish or covering it with something like no one cares and if you have no idea which i do every so often i tend to pick stuff that's seasonally appropriate doesn't mean i'll necessarily be right but the very least it looked like i was trying to outfit coordinate <laughs> and so it's less likely to look bad on film because it matches the season vaguely and actually that works more than you might think a lot of times where i've been like i have no clue what i'm doing grabbed random polish that was appropriate it looks really good and you were like how'd you do that and i'm all i don't know and another thing is that if you are doing a bunch of shoots in a day and you like your base coat but you don't want to change it, top coats with glitter, shimmer, or multi-chrome chrome flakies, they are amazing. So I'll often do everything in one coat of something and it'll look like I knew what I was doing. It's great. For now, I've covered a good gist of stuff. I would love to, if you guys are interested, do more of this, but we're already at 15 minutes. Let's keep going. We're gonna talk now about polishes because I'm a geek who really got into indie polish when I started and so my polish collection is mainly indie with a few bigger brands that are still not as mainstream. That does not mean that you shouldn't raid Nordstrom Rack, go for OPI, grab your Essie bottles. There is no shame in grabbing the polish that makes sense for your budget. As it is, my polishes are going to be a bit more expensive. They range from about $7 to $17. We'll explain the $17 one later. But that's because I have the money and privilege to spend money on nail polish. 
I also spend a lot of time looking for sales and we'll talk about some pre-orders and ways to save money in these guys as we go. And as a heads up, there are going to be affiliate links. I have chosen to not include everything as an affiliate to try and make sure that you get the best bang for your buck. So I'll do my best here. Yay! Number one, my can't live without item. If there's any one gear takeaway besides nail oil, seriously, get some nail oil that I can give you today. It is my love for peel off base coats. In particular, I've grown to love UNT Cosmetics Ready for Takeoff. It is wonderful. Now, some little tips and tricks that I found. Number one, dear goodness, make sure it fully is dry. Number two, I like waiting at least 15 to 20 minutes before taking off a swatch, because, yeah. And number three, always, always put on a top coat if you're gonna be using Ready for Takeoff. As much as I love it, if you forget to put on a base coat, it's gonna be gross. It's really gummy and just, no, 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 no. So, like, let me show you guys how easy this is. Actually, I'll do it with my right hand. Boom. I didn't do that clean of a job on it, but I just put this nail polish on like, it just started drying 10 minutes ago. So usually it's actually a much cleaner removal, but that's it. It means I don't use as much acetone, my hands are happier, and I can swap out polishes that much faster. So the bigger brands that I use that you'll know would be Julep and Butter London. Julep has some amazing discounts to their Maven program. I got a lot of the polishes you see from me from Julep, through a Maven deal where I got 12 minis in a box free when I bought my first Maven order for I think for $25. And I think I have some coupon below, I'll put it in. Either way, that deal with all the minis has been a savior because a lot of them are one coat polishes, which does not happen very much in the indie market. Well, how do you know? Butter London does also make some wonderful shimmers and a bit more of the glitters, so also nice. And they also have some really good package deals usually for about 50 to 75 dollars where you get a ton of nail polish for the price and it's good polish so if you're interested in buying from a smaller brand that's not fc or opi sized but still starting to get headway butter london and julep are totally the way to go yep for these smaller brands that i go for because i am that kind of a geek my favorite brand for budget killing is ILNP or I Love Nail Polish. They're based out of Las Vegas. Barbara is amazing. I want to cry whenever the email for pre-sale comes in, but they have two great things for their sales. One, they usually have a pre-sale each season where she drops all the prices by a dollar. It's great. And then also her point system is fantastic. So almost every time I've bought from them, I usually have free shipping or some other goodie because I have enough points in my account. So definitely before you buy from Island P, make sure you get your account going because it's good. The smallest brands that I watch are probably gonna be Lucky 13 Lacquer and Baroness X, who are both actually based in Washington State and I adore them, but there's a small problem. As much as I love them, they often go for polish names that I can't say on YouTube. Like the lovely polish I'm wearing today, very lovely polish. This is but, but, but. And for those of you who thought I was joking, I can't make this up if I tried. And I will say that Lucky 13 tends to have slightly safer polish names. Baroness X, I'm not even gonna show you the label. They have much safer names in general, like Doom Jelly and Doom Fire, but one of my favorites from Baroness X, I can't say on the air and I'm not going to, sorry. <laughs> so, wonderful polishes, but keep that in mind when you have to talk about them. Ooh, almost forgot. Speaking of jellies, another one that's really great that's indie brand but a bit bigger would be Cirque. Cirque is the one that has I've used for its New York Fashion Week color. It's this wonderful blue jelly. Stuff goes on, great, but still again, two to three coats. And again, almost forgot. My most expensive polish is Isla Polish, I-L-A, and I got that one actually in a subscription box. Because normally I do not spend $17 for single polish. Isla does do a great job, it's just more, I don't have the budget for that. 
Oh my goodness, I've forgotten all the polishes today. And last but not least, since I said you need to have a good top coat, I've been really liking the top coat from OOO Polish. She's super small brand, really nice colors, and formulated for women of color. Hooray! Which you're like, why is the person with no skin tone going for it? Because we liked her colors. They're really awesome, and her top coat is really great, and it's cheap. Okay, I have been rambling. This is out of order. But of course, I should leave you with one last vital tip. For love all that's good in the world, if you're shooting and you're shooting like me, just paint one hand. Seriously, if you have a peel-off base coat, no one's gonna know in 20 minutes. So just paint one hand, one hand. It's so much less work, seriously. I, I can't stress it enough. Normally I don't do both hands. I just have one, I peel it off and I'm done and boom and so much less stress. And also if I change my mind, I could then switch to a different color on my other hand and then I have options. It's so great. Do not worry about evenness or anything like that. Okay, this has been a lot of content and some are rambly, so thank you again for listening. If you have any questions, you want to talk nail polish, I, I, let, let's talk nail polish. Let's definitely talk nail polish, that sounds wonderful. Leave me a comment below. As always, I'm Jess Tell Dessert Geek, returning to desserts on Saturday, and let's talk polish sometime. Laters!